Good morning and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. If you join us live during the 7 o'clock hour, hashtag live. If you join us during the any other time, hashtag recorded. And if you would, share this out on your page, hashtag share and get out on your page. It's so good to be with all of you uh, today. It is January the 12th, 2021. Uh, so tag your friends. You can do the little at symbol and put their name. It'll bring them right to the room. You can share the Pastor Doug page and they will get notifications every single day. I want to say thank you to Lisa down in Louisiana for sending me this pastor cup. I use it all the time. Pray first. We're more than just a conversation. We're a family. And for a lot of us, we are the church. And all God's people said, amen. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those and let our first time guests know that we are glad that they are here. So if you are a first time guest and you see the hearts and the likes and the bouquet uh, going up the side of your device, that is our family telling you welcome, uh, that we're glad that you are here. I'm gonna talk about something today and I wanna say just a word of caution, don't make that decision yet. I'm, somebody needs to hear that. Don't make that decision yet. And we'll, we'll get to that, the reason why in just a moment. Let me just say this. You know that Pray First is not just a daily conversation. Uh, it's not just a Facebook Live broadcast. Pray First is a principle. And that principle is that we give God the first. The first of our day, the first of our week, the first of our month, the first of our year. Before we touch our phones in the morning, before we roll out of bed and check Messenger, social media, before we check our text messages, our inboxes, before we check the news, before we check the weather, before we check anything, before we talk to our spouse or our pets or family, we talk to God. Because when you put God in first place, everything else can fall into order. When God is not in first place, nothing else can be in order. Priority. And all God's people said, amen. All right, so here's the thing. I want to say it one more time for those of you maybe who just joined us. Do not make that decision yet. You've got a decision. Either it's clear or it's coming. Uh, do not make that decision yet, and I will explain why. Uh, we live in a world that is full of anxiety, fear, depression, mental health disorders, physical health disorders, complicated situations, chemical imbalances that cause people to have many different feelings. Hashtag feelings. I want to try to help you discover what are subjective feelings and what are not subjective feelings. In other words, what is a feeling that you just kind of comes over you emotionally and what is a feeling that is guiding you? Because a lot of times we allow subjective feelings, emotional feelings, to direct our paths, to uh, give us an informed decision-making process and it's not informed. Today, I want to explain to you how to make decisions when you don't know what to do, uh, but you sometimes feel like you should do something, but it's not the right thing to do. Scripture is very clear that there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it leads to death. So we don't want make, to make decisions based on what seems right or what is subjectively being felt by our emotions, because remember what the heart is. It is broken, it is deceiving, and it is without remedy. It's unfixable. It's broken. So when you think about following your heart, just listen to your heart, that is not what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm going to be talking about how to make your decisions with fewer regrets. Everybody hashtag regret. Anxiety is not just a mental health issue. Fear Oppression, depression, anxiety, chemical imbalances, all the things I listed earlier, uh, they're not just mental health issues. Uh, mental health issues, anxiety, fear can cause many physical, now a lot of people's uh, uh, mental health issues are physical. I don't want you to, we are so intertwined. I want you to know that. We are a body, soul, and spirit. And our soul alone is three parts, mind, will, and emotions. We're all twisted and intertwined. It all works together. But our mental health also will affect our physical health, even our fears, 
our anxieties. Uh, it will cause, it can cause skin irritations, fear, anxiety, stress, tension can cause skin irritations, rashes, heart conditions, heart complications, arthritis, and a list of things that your mental health uh, will, how your mental health will affect your physical health. I want you to understand why that is so. Your physical body which was designed in the image and likeness of God, was never designed for anxiousness. Your physical body was, your mental body was never designed for anxiety and stress and tension. You were created in the image and likeness of God who lives in perfect peace. I want everybody to hashtag peace. He doesn't stress. God doesn't stress. God never feels anxious. God, God never uh, feels oppression or depression or anxiousness or fear. God never feels these things. And you and I are created in his image, in his likeness. We weren't created to experience or to maintain or to carry or to linger in stress and tension and anxiety and fear and, and concern. We weren't created for that. We were created in the image and likeness of God. One of the number one reasons that medication is prescribed in the United States of America is anxiety, fear, depression, behavioral disorders, social anxieties. One of the number one prescribed medications in this country is for mental health. And I've got a list of them. I'm not going to read through them all. Xanax, Librem, Clocopin, Valium, Ativan. It just goes, it goes on and on and on. And it talks about antidepressants. It talks about beta blockers, um, remedies for anxiety, such as exercise. And then all of them have uh, side effects. And what I found interesting was that the side effects of most anxiety medications is more anxiety and, and depression and and, and, and tension and stress. And that one of the things that it says over and over is that to, they need to be uh, monitored for suicidal tendencies and thoughts and depressive acts. Let me be clear. I'm not against medications. I'm not against uh, therapies. I'm not against a lot of things, but those are treatments of something that you already have. I want to talk to you this morning about how to avoid some of the avoidable pains, some of the avoidable regrets, how to make decisions. Uh, again, you are all intertwined. I believe with every part of my being that your chemical makeup, that your uh, brain firing synapses, your your uh, physical bodies and all of your organs, your spirit, your soul, your body, they're all connected. And that inside of our DNA is the blessings of God and the uh, generational curses of man that, that affect us. I mean, it's a very complicated intertwined thing. So in a very complicated world with very complicated processes and processes, how do you make an informed, wise decision when the word is not clear, the Bible's not clear, the rule is not clear, um, there's no right, there's no wrong. I, I want to talk to you about that today, and I want to say this one more time, and I hope you're listening, because this is for someone, and I want you to hear it clearly. Do not make that decision yet. Though you feel, this is very important, though you feel like it is the right decision, because there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it leads to death. How many of you ever made a decision that you felt was right, and it turned out to be oh so wrong. Hashtag yep, yep. You really thought it was right, but it turned out to be oh so wrong. Hashtag yep, yep. So I want to tell you, the peace that we have is a peace that, that God gives. There's a peace that the world gives. There's a peace that you know God gives, and it's different. The peace that God gives comes from himself. Now let's get into the verses this morning. Number one, I want you to hashtag number one. Hashtag number one. The peace of God guides us. In other words, let's, let's change that. Number one, hashtag number one, peace is how God guides us. Peace 
is how God guides us. I'll say that one more time. Peace is how God guides us. Colossians 3, verses 8 through 15. But now you yourselves are to put off all of these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man and his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So you've been born again and you are renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created you. He who created you lives in peace. Not tension, not anxiety, not fear, but peace. You've put on a new man. You have this knowledge of according to the one in the image who created you. Verse 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all in all. Hashtag in all, but Christ is in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies. Now, I want you to think about this in relation to your response to what's going on in the world today. The pandemic, politics, the nation, your family, maybe grief, uh, your co-workers, social media, the, the, the restraint of, uh, of articulation of thoughts and feelings, um, all of these things. Don't you think about all? I want you to think about that in relation to this real world application. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must also forgive them. Verse 14, and, and listen, this is going to lead you to peace that will guide you, okay? And you're going to need this guidance guidance, guidance as it's going to get darker and darker. The, the lines are going to get more blurry. The rules are going to be less obvious. You're going to need this type of guidance to fly with instruments when it's cloudy, when it's stormy, when it's raining, when it's dark. You're going to need to be instrument certified, verse 15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be thankful and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. I'm going to say that one more time. I want you to say it out loud. Let the peace of God, let the peace of God rule in your heart. The Greek word for rule here is brabio, brabio, and it means to umpire. Let the peace of God umpire your life. Let the peace of God umpire your decisions. Exactly the same word as the umpire in a sporting event. Let the peace of God umpire. Umpire means situational guidance. What do you do in this instance? What is the, the uh, authority that makes the call? You thought you did right. They thought they did right. There is... Uh, uh, Dispute between two thoughts, two processes, two actions, two decisions internally. What is the umpire that makes the call, that makes the decision? It's situational guidance of how to stay in bounds. It's situational guidance of how to follow the rules. And umpires are there for situational guidance and how to treat others. That word is so deep. Let the peace of God umpire your life. Let the peace of God help you stay in bounds. Let the peace of God give you situational day-by-day -day guidance as to how to respond, what decisions to make. How, let the situational uh, response and this umpire help you follow the rules and help teach us how to treat others. Guys, most of the decisions we make on a daily basis are not whether something is right or whether something is wrong, whether something is good or whether something is bad. Most of the decisions we make on a daily basis have a right and right choice for us to decide between. Right and right. It's not right and wrong. It's not bad and good. But what we have developed here at Cross Point, what we develop here at Pray First, is what is the wise thing to do? What is wise and what is unwise? Not for someone else, but for me right now, because sometimes the decision that is unwise for me right now might be wise later.
and vice versa. Something that I should do right now, I should not do later. So what is the wise thing for me to do in light of my current circumstances, what's going on in my life right now, in light of my past experiences, what I have experienced and seen and done, what is the wise thing to do? What is the wise thing to do in light of my future hopes and dreams? Because every wise person understands that today is connected to yesterday and yesterday will show up in tomorrow. Listen, there's so many decisions in the Bible that are not found in the Bible, the decisions you have to make on a daily basis, such as who to marry, when to marry, where to live, when to live there, what house to buy, what house not to buy. It's not a right or wrong. It's not a good or bad. You might have two right choices. How do you make that decision? Where to go to church, when to not be at that church anymore. Uh, who are your friends? Who can you no longer be friends with? Uh, what car to buy? Listen, God is not going to pick between two makes and models, okay? There might be a right and a right. The question you have to ask, what is wise and unwise? Do I do it now? Do I do it later? In light of my current circumstances, in light of my past experiences and my future hopes and dreams, is this a wise decision to make? When to buy them, where to buy them, how to buy them, how to finance, how much should I save up to put down? Decisions that we make on a daily basis that causes us anxiety and stress and tension. Come on, come on. Which then in turn affects our body, our health, and not just ourselves, but our families. How do you make decisions when the options are clearly not right or wrong? You make those decisions based on peace. Everybody hashtag peace and the peace of God. The umpire of God will help you stay in bounds. The umpire of God will help you follow the rules. The umpire of God will give you situational guidance. The umpire of God will teach you, help you how to respond and treat others. You make those decisions based on the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding that is keeping guard over your heart. Let me give you an example. In the Old Testament, there was a little pouch that would hang down behind the breastplate of the high priest. So he'd wear this outer breastplate, but inside there, where he could not see, there was a little pouch hanging down that was touching his heart. Inside of that pouch was a stick and a rock. It was known as the Urim and the Thummim. The Urim and the Thummim. The Urim and Thummim is mentioned in Exodus, it's mentioned in Numbers, it's mentioned in Deuteronomy. Behind the breastplate was a little pouch with a little rock and a little stick. He couldn't see it, but he could feel it. The Urim meant light. It meant fire. It was the little rock. It was light to his path. It would illuminate the darkness. It would help inform the decision. The Thummim was the stick. It was protection. It was perf perfect perfect standard. It was the rules. It was what was right. This also developed in who was innocent and not innocent. And in this pouch, as it would lay over his heart, and as he could not see it, he would feel it. The high priest would pray about a decision. Do we attack the Philistines? Do we ignore the Philistines? Do we go to war? Do we not go to war? Do we punish this person? Do we not punish this person? Do we build this building? Do we not build this building? Do I allow for this marriage? Do I not allow for this marriage? Do we spend? Do we not? They would go, the high priest would go before God, he would pray, and then he would wait. Hashtag wait. Let me say this again. Don't make that decision yet. When you have two right decisions in front of you, there's not a bad, there's not a good, there's not a right, there's not a wrong, and you need to make the wise decision. You go before God, you pray, you ask for peace, and the peace will umpire your decision. Listen to what the Urim and the Thummim would do in the Old Testament. He couldn't see it, but he'd feel it. The rock would get warm if he would make, was to make one decision. The stick would stand up if he were to make another. It would guide him. This kind of decision making is not subjective or based on your feelings. There may be some feelings that you don't want to do that God wants you to do. There may be some feelings that you want to do that God doesn't want you to do. I can't tell you how many times you're going to come to a fork in the road and there's a decision to be made. And you can go left and you can go right. 
And you want to go right, and God wants you to go left. You want to go one way, and God wants you to go another. Go God's way. The hard right over the easy wrong is going to bless you every time and bring you peace, and that peace will surpass understanding. You won't even understand why you made the decision, and you don't even have to factor all the reasons. You don't even have to write down a list of pros and cons because you can't understand why God would lead you to do something that doesn't make sense. However, there is an inner peace. Have you ever felt that peace when you made a purchase or when you made a decision? You just knew it was the right thing to do. You just had a peace that came over you. You weren't tense. You weren't anxious. You weren't fearful. But have you ever made a decision and the whole time you were making that decision, you did not have peace and you thought, this probably isn't right. I shouldn't be doing this. This doesn't feel right. I just, something, something's not right here. Peace of God is something that is tangible. Peace is something that you can feel. Peace is something that expresses inside of you and moves you forward. If the word is clear, if the Bible is clear on the subject and it says to do something, do what the word says. If the Bible is clear and it tells you do not do something, do what the Bible says. But if there is something that does not have a right or wrong, a good or a bad, you're going to have to go before God and pray for peace. Pray for an umpire to make the deciding call what's in bounds, what's out of bounds what to do, what not to do, how to keep the rules, follow the rules, when you scored, when you didn't, how to treat other people. Many decisions we make every single day, the Bible does not directly say anything about. I want you to pray for peace and don't make that decision yet. I gotta ask you a question before I pray you out of here. How many decisions have you made based on fear? In other words, this deal on this car is not going to be available tomorrow. This house that you desperately want will not allow for a contingency for you to sell your house. This, this situation will not allow for you to wait. This, this girl, this boy, if, if you don't give your everything to them, they may not be here tomorrow. Uh, if you don't, you know, say yes, if you don't do that, and, and, and this fear that, this anxiousness that I'm going to miss something, that I'm afraid, you know, I'm going to lose something. Any decision that you make based on fear, based on lack, based on greed, based on selfishness, based on lust, based on I want, based on anger, some of those decisions, come here, come here, come here, come here, were not wrong decisions. They were wrong right now decisions. There's going to be some things that you're going to have to make decisions of that might not be wrong in the future, but they're wrong right now. It's not just what we need to ask God for peace for. It's when. Not whether or not I should do this, but when should I do this? Not whether or not I should do this, but where should I do this? Not whether or not I should do this, but how should I do this? Not whether or not I should do this, but with whom should I do this? A decision based on anxiousness, a decision based on fear, a decision based on I feel like I'm going to lose it if I don't do it is always a bad decision. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, for every person listening, every person watching, I pray that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding would keep and guard our hearts. In other words, shut our heart's mouth, keep and guard it so that I don't make a subjective decision based on my feelings, but that I will wait on the peace of God to guide me, to rule and reign inside me and help me make the right decision. In Jesus' name. All God's people said, amen. Hashtag amen. If you feel like that this helped you in any way, I ask you to please go right now and share this out. Maybe write a little comment above. You have some friends and family that need to hear this. I need to hear this. I'll go back and listen to this. And uh, I love you guys. I love y'all so much. There's too many unavoidable pains in this world not to avoid the avoidable ones. Bye.